playing for a title is something every athlete dreams of, and playing at home for one is even better. So we had some real crazy weather at times there were hail, at other times there was lightning, but to the game itself. And as you can see, it's snowing like crazy behind us, but the crews are working very hard to make sure that this track stays in safe condition. We're about 130 laps into the race, so the last 120 ought to be something special. That means some of our seniors are starting to play their final home games of the season. And tonight, the Hillman girls basketball team played their last home game from Hillman High School. Did you know the moment that you were about to hit 1,000? Sheldon uh, told me that if I hit that free throw before, that, that it was my 1,000, I think. I think that's what he was jumping around before it for. It'll be a quick turnaround for the Wildcats who play again on Thursday against Gaylord. The winner of that game will move on to the regional final. At Spartan Stadium in East Lansing for WBKB Sports, I'm Mike Yakachonis. I heard you got hit by a puck today. Is that true? Are you going to confirm that for yes, us? Yes, I did, and we'll see it in the bump in just a second. You know, 100% <laughs> worth it to get those kind to of shots, those. though. And coming up next, <laughs> folks, the Alpena Wildcats look to clinch their first regional title in 12 years. And here comes that puck. Oh, right at me and wow. also tie a school record <laughs> we also have all of your college and pro sports to go over tonight we'll be right back with sports <laughs> March Madness is in full swing for both men's and women's basketball programs across the country. Central Michigan and Michigan State met up in the first round of the women's tournament in one of the best games I've seen. The Chippewas entered the game as the favorites against the Spartans. In the fourth, Central's Raina Frost gives the Chips the lead with just under three and a half to go in the game, but the Spartans responded as Sydney Cooks ties the game with the layup and would go on to give them the lead on their next possession. With 21 seconds left, Presley Hudson sets up at half court, beats the double team, and sinks the huge three to put Central in the lead. Spartans call a timeout and try to get their next play figured out. Shally Colley responds with the drive and layup that puts the Spartans back on top with only 7.4 seconds to go. Central calls their final timeout to try and get one more basket and earn the win. The Chippewa's buzzer beater is no good as the Spartans win a thriller 88 to 87 in the first round of the women's tournament. MSU will face one seed Notre Dame on Monday. Michigan and Florida haven't played each other this season, but I'm sure Wolverine fans remember the 41 to 15 Peach Bowl loss from this past football season. Michigan's basketball team looked for a better outcome in the round of 32 against the Gators. Charles Matthews was quiet against Montana, but heated up today. Florida kept it close early on in this one. Jalen Hudson hits the three to bring Florida within one, nearing the midway point in the first half. Matthews would make sure Florida didn't get any upset ideas as he goes into the momentum-changing jam. Wolverines go up 29-26 with about three minutes to go in the first. Isaiah Livers has been practicing his threes and hits the half's last point as Michigan heads to the locker room up 32-28. Michigan's defense really shined today, but on offense it was all Jordan Poole. He had a team-high 19 points, including this layup and one. Wolverines held the Gators to a season low as Michigan wins 64-49 and punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. Xavier Simpson says the Wolverines are going to enjoy this one before getting ready for a deep run. It means a lot. Right now we're going to embrace this win, um, embrace every second of NCAA because March Madness is tremendous. Um, so we're going to embrace this, get back to the drawing board Monday, and um, hopefully we can advance to the lead eight. Michigan will play the winner of Buffalo and Texas Tech on Thursday. Michigan State and Minnesota are the first Big Ten teams to match up in the tournament since 2000. And the Spartans had the edge early. Xavier Tillman takes off and puts it away. Spartans are up 22 to 11 midway through the first half. Amir Coffey scored a game high 27 as the Golden Govers make it interesting. His dunk starts a comeback that saw Minnesota come within nine, but the Spartans had the answer. Cassius Winston had been quiet, but woke up to break Minnesota's momentum. He'd had MSU's next bucket as well. He even got it done on defense as he steals the ball and Tillman sets him up for three. That was seven points in less than a minute for the Big Ten Player of the Year. Minnesota falls as Michigan State rolls to a 70 to 50 victory. The Spartans are headed to Washington DC for their Sweet 16 matchup against LSU on Friday. Let's jump to the scoreboards. Detroit managed a ninth inning comeback to defeat the Rays eight to seven. Miggy hit his fourth home run of the spring, while Jordan Zimmerman went four innings and gave up three runs. The Tigers face the Blue Jays tomorrow in what will be an opening day preview. 
Pistons are in the midst of a West Coast road trip. After beating the Suns on Thursday, Detroit looked to win another West Coast game against the Blazers. The Pistons need a big game from Andre Drummond in this one, but it's Reggie Jackson who's going to be stepping up early and sinking the three to put the Pistons out in front 14 to 9. Even with the hot start, the Pistons ran into trouble with Portland's bench. Seth Curry, the younger brother of Steph Curry, has 16 points through the first half as the Blazers step out to a 28-21 lead. The Pistons would gain back some momentum, though they trailed 59-56 at halftime. We'll head back to the scoreboards just one more time here. The Red Wings are also playing on the West Coast tonight against the Vegas Golden Knights. Through two periods, the Red Wings are up one to nothing. Taro Hirose picked up his third NHL point on an assist to Luke Glenn Denning.